Hi, it's time for transformation homework on my math lab, and I can't think of a better way. Describe how the given function can be obtained from one of the basic graphs, then graph the function. This is y equals quantity x plus 7 squared. Quantity means there are parentheses around x plus 7. Well, you recognize this as the argument of the, of the uh, square function. Our basic function is x squared, or x squared, and the plus 7 means the opposite of what you would normally expect. In class, when we did homework, we took the x plus 7, set it equal to 0, and solved for x and found that x equals negative 7. And that means that all of the x coordinates <clears throat> are going to move 7 units to the left. But of course, the quicker way to do this is to just say, oh yeah, okay, this is a horizontal shift which goes in the, in the opposite direction of what I would expect. And there's my cat causing trouble. Oh, there's the cat. Okay. Right, so the only transformation we have here is a horizontal shift to the left seven units. Now, let's look and see what we need to do. Start with the graph of, they all say this, all the choices, and then shift the graph seven units to the right. No, that's what you'd expect. Shift the graph seven units to the left. Yes. So I'll answer x squared. And then check my answer. Excellent. Now we're going to graph. I click here where it says click to enlarge the graph. I pick the kind of graph I want to have. Well, it's got to be a parabola because this is a squared function. Now, click the Click the graph to plot your curve. Now, if I have to graph the vertex, and with some of these transformations you don't know, and it doesn't say to do that, I'm just going to click. There, it didn't matter where I clicked. Okay. This is the graph of the basic function y equals x squared which is not the final answer, because I have to fill in this box with different kinds of transformations. A vertical stretch shrink, a horizontal stretch shrink, a vertical shift, a horizontal shift, reflect over the x-axis, reflect over the y-axis. Well, the only kind of shift I have is a horizontal shift, and since x equals negative 7, when we set x plus 7 equal to 0, I move to negative 7. And then I click Save. And then I check Answer. Very good. Let's go to the next question. Describe how the graph of the function g of x equals negative one-fourth times the square root of x can be obtained from the basic graph. Then graph the function. This one-fourth is a vertical shrink, and the negative sign is a reflection across the x-axis. You just have to learn these things. You have to memorize them. The best way to do it is with flashcards. Start with the graph of f of x equals the square root of x. Then do something by multiplying 
each, ah, that's a hint. The only time these problems talk about multiplying is when we're talking about multiplying y coordinates. And that means they're talking about the stretch or shrink first. So we're going to shrink, shrink vertically by multiplying each y coordinate by click 1 divided by 4, 1 fourth. Finally, reflect it, reflect it, meaning the graph, reflect the, the basic graph, reflect the graph across the x-axis. And now let's check answer. Fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> now it sure looks like we have the same problem, doesn't it? But now we get to look at the graph. Aha, that's what we're supposed to do. Well, normally, the graph of the square root of x would look sort of like this, but a little higher. So let's see now. One fourth would shrink it. Uh, but that negative sign is going to turn this upside down. That would make it A. Let's see if I'm right. Cool. Ah, now this is interesting. This is a linear equation. That means it's a straight line. Now, if you were looking at this back in the beginning of the semester, you would have said, oh, that's a straight line. Negative 3 is the slope, and the plus 3, the 3, is the y-intercept. That's true, but what we're doing now is we're, um, we're using transformations. The basic graph is y equals x. The 3, which we know is part of the slope, is also the vertical stretch. And then the plus 3 is a vertical shift. Oh, yes, and the negative is a shift, is a reflection across the x-axis. So, let's begin. To obtain the graph of h of x equals negative 3x plus 3, start with the graph of y equals x. Then, blank it by multiplying. Ah. So they're going to talk about stretching or shrinking. This is a stretch. Stretch it vertically by multiplying each y-coordinate by 3. Then reflect it across the x-axis and shift it up because of the plus 3, 3 units. So here's what I'm going for. Start with the graph of y equals x. Stretch it vertically by multiplying each y-coordinate by 3. Then reflect it across the x-axis and shift it up 3 units. Check answer. Yes. Now they want us to do it. Aha. All right, click. And... Click straight line tool. Click the graph to plot the first point. Okay. 
Straight lines, for some reason, always fall back on the old way of graphing, with points. So I'm going to find three, the y-intercept, and look up here to always make sure you're clicking on the right point. I want 0, 3, nope, that's 0, 2, here's 0, 3, click. And then, to get my next point, I'm going to go down 3 and to the right 1. In other words, I'm using the slope as a road map. Down 3, 1, 2, See, I'm up three, so down three, and to the right one. Hmm. Save. Check. All right, I was ready to get that one wrong. I've just discovered that the best way to do this is not to use the slope as a roadmap. Describe how the graph of the function g of x equals one-fourth times the absolute value of x minus 5 can be obtained from the basic graph and then graph the function. Okay, we'll start with the graph of h of x equals the absolute value of x. Remember, the absolute value function looks like a v. Then... Do something to it vertically. So I would say shrink it vertically by a factor of one fourth. Finally, shift it down one fourth, no, down five. This is going to be tricky when you do it. Make sure you know that you're going down five. Check. Okay. Now, the um, try to see which way I'm tracing here. Y equals the absolute value of X looks like a V centered at the origin and going off to the right and left at a 45 degree angle. Now this is being shrunk, which means the V is going to have lower Y coordinates, so it's going to open up more. It's gonna be a fatter V. So it's definitely not B or D. So now, stopping here, we're going to say that it's got to be either A or C. But we shifted our fat V down 5. So it's got to be this one. I'm going to click on C and check answer. Ah, very good. All right, now here we have a cubic. The basic function is x to the third power. We're going to be shifting it 10 units to the left. Take x plus 10, set it equal to zero and solve for x, and you get 10, uh, negative 10 as your answer. x equals negative 10, which means you go to the left 10 units. So we're going to the left 10 units, and then we're going to reflect over the x-axis. All right, so let's see. Shift it left 10, and then reflect it across the x-axis that soon. Okay, sure. So start with the graph of x. to the third, shift it 10 units, 
shift it left 10 units, and then reflect it across the x-axis. OK. So far, so good. Now we're going to graph it. But you see, this way is really easier than graphing other kinds of graphs. Because once you choose your graph, so this is one of the basic graphs. And I gave you a, um, a sheet of paper showing you um, what each basic graph looks like, at least the ones we deal with for transformations. We haven't gotten to the two others yet. This is the graph of x cubed. It says so if you hover over it. So you could, I suppose, if you don't remember, just hover over each one until you see x to the third or x cubed. Click there. Then look at the yellow banner. Click the graph to plot your curve. Click. This is the basic graph, and it's really hard to see. It's yellow. I wish they'd go back to using blue for this. Anyway, this is the basic graph of y equals x cubed. Now, we go to our transformation box and fill in the information. We've got two transformations. We're going to make a horizontal shift, not shrink or stretch, but horizontal shift 10 units to the left. So let's go to the negative direction and wait until we see 10, negative 10. And then we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So I click there and then I save and then I check. Yes. Okay, see that's very fast. Here our basic graph is x to the second power, so x squared. We're going to be moving to the left three units and up four units. Start with the graph of f of x equals x squared. Shift it, the graph, shift it left three units, and then shift it up four units. The plus four on the right end is a horizontal is a vertical shift up and the number in parentheses with the x affects the vertical direct uh, the horizontal direction inside the parentheses horizontal outside the parentheses vertical okay Now we get to graph it. So click. This is a parabola because it's x squared. And then click. There's the basic graph. And then come down here. We have two transformations. We have a horizontal shift to the left. Three and a vertical shift up four. One, two, three, four. So I save and I check answer. There you go. Now it looks like we're dealing with x cubed again. What one third in front of the x cubed means we're going to have a vertical shrink. And the minus two on the end means we're going to have a vertical shift down. So shrink and shift can sound alike. One third 
is a vertical shrink and minus two is a vertical shift down. Okay. So it says, how can the graph of g of x equals one third x cubed minus two be obtained from the graph of f of x equals x cubed? Well, you stretch it vertically. No, we don't. We shrink it vertically and shift up two units. No. Shrink vertically and shift down two units. Okay. Now click. Now this is a squiggle. My favorite, I love that squiggle. All you have to do is just click. So I click at the origin, but click anywhere. Then fill, ooh, now this is a different kind of box. Notice that for vertical stretch or shrink, it says one. That means there is no vertical shrink or stretch. Same thing for horizontal stretch or shrink. One means there is no stretch and no shrink. There is, however, a vertical shrink. Oh, there is a vertical shrink. We don't have a, and we have a vertical shift, but we'll take care of that in a minute. One third. Okay. Divided by three. That wasn't hard. I was afraid it would be. Now there's a vertical shift down. Black cat coming. Here we go. This is the other cat. Bubba was in video three. This is video four. So I guess it belongs to Kitty Love. Vertical shift down two units. So that will be negative two. So I'm going to save and check. Oh, okay. Now here we have the basic graph, f of x equals the square root of x, or y equals the square root of x. But here, we're going to have a horizontal shift. This, is, this minus two is not out behind the function. It's in the function. So this is a horizontal shift. Take x minus two, set it equal to zero, solve for x. You'll get x equals positive two, which means all of the x coordinates of all the points on the graph will shift two units to the right. All right, so we're gonna start with g of x equals the square root of x then shift it right two units. Okay, now we're gonna take a, a shot at guessing what it looks like. Okay, this would be the answer if the if we were doing the graph of uh, y equals the square root of x and then shifting it up two units. But we're not, no. So we are shifting two units to the right. And given that the scale is 20, oh my goodness, each one of these hatch marks is four, or is it five? Five, 10, 15, 20, five. So that could definitely be a two. I'm gonna go for B and we'll see. Okay.
Now we've got a cube root. <clears throat> the cube root of x minus 4. Only one transformation there. We're going down, vertically down, 4 units. So shift the graph 4 units up. No. Shift the graph 4 units left. No. Shift the graph 4 units down. You got it. Okay. Now, this is the, the basic shape of y equals um, um, the cube root of x. But what's happened? It's gone down 4 units. This, I bet this is just y equals the cube root of x. Here it's gone up. Here it's gone down. I'm voting for A. Okay. Now, G of X equals the absolute value of 2X. Well, absolute value of X is going to be your basic graph right here. Now we're going to start with the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. Start with the graph of y equals, yes, here, the absolute value of x. And then do something to it. Do what to it? That's a number bigger than 1 in front of the x in the argument of the function. That means you're going to divide all of the x coordinates by 2, which will make them smaller. So it's going to be a horizontal shrink. Horizontally. By dividing each x-coordinate by 2. Let's see. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Okay, those are trickier all that horizontal stuff, I find it trickier. So if you do, then we agree. All right, f of x, we are at 10 and there are 17 problems. I think I probably need to make a part one and a part two of this video. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to stop recording, and then I'll start recording again.